Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Son through the Father whose name is Yahushua. In him we lie. Uh, in him. Where am I? At? In him lies the only There we go. In him lies. What is it? The only hope for salvation. It can be obtained by grace through faith, not of works. Bless anyone should boast. And give it freely as a gift to all who obey him. The truth. There we go. We'll come after that. Anybody that does not obey. If you do not obey him, that means what? You don't believe. That means you do not believe. It has made, been made manifest. It's manifest. That you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. You know what I'm saying? You know how we say that, right? The, the supernatural experience. You know, sometimes people really be feeling stuff. Right? You ever ask somebody, you know what I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying, really like come to you like, you know what I'm saying, like, that was a real experience. Like, I know God is real because. You know what I'm saying? They hit you with that good old, like, because. That stuff be real. But you look at their life. I mean, you might come here and you learn something and you look at their life and you be like, well, that thing don't line up with, you know what I'm saying, what Philip said. Or even you read the book and you look at it and like, my book, very clear. You cannot do that and be saved. You cannot be that, do that and, and make it into the kingdom. Right? But we look at their life and they talking about, no, 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 I, I'm, listen, I promise you I had an experience with God. He spoke to me. He told me, do this or don't do that. Right? It's important that we, we understand and we know any experience that we have, anything that we go through, it don't trump what the word says. God can pop up right, right here in the middle of this study and be like, listen, y'all, you know what I'm saying? I rock with y'all, all of y'all. At the same time, if you disobey that word, what does that mean for us? How, how can we prove that? We just read it last week. First uh, John. What we read, Daniel? What we read last week? That proves that Most High God can give us a mission. Next minute, he'd kill our butt. Moses. Oh, Moses. Yeah. Moses. Right. What happened with Moses? Moses. Uh, right before they went to go to what? To, uh, to Egypt, right? Yeah, Egypt, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. He didn't circumcise his kids. Mm -hmm. Right. He didn't circumcise them kids. Most High God just got done telling. Most High God told him, "Listen, I want you to go down to Pharaoh. I want you to tell him this, that, and the other thing." You can imagine Moses all excited, like, man, I'm about to get out here and go, Pharaoh, man, this is our kid. You know what I'm saying? What you mean? Set us free. Moses walking next thing you know, next, next darn verse, it tell him. <laughs> and Moses, I mean, God so, uh, sought to kill Moses. Ooh. That quick. I just gave you the game plan of exactly how things are going to go. And in a moment's notice, God sought to kill Moses. Because at the end of the day, no matter what your experience is, no matter how much you talk to God, if you do not do what he says, all bets are off. That has to be the forefront for us. But we can have some good, I mean, knowledge too, right? It may not be a whole lot of experience now. These are the days of darkness, right? The most I got, he darkened us up. Grab, uh, grab Isaiah chapter uh, 29 for me, verse 9. It's Isaiah chapter 29, verse 9. These are the days of darkness for us. All right, so it may not be a whole lot of visions. It may not be a whole lot of experiences. A lot of these people that say they got experience, they probably lying. They may not be, though. Either way, you got to obey, right? Either way, but they may not be lying, but they probably is lying. You know what I'm saying? A lot of experience. But at the end of the day, you know what we do have access to? Through the Most High God? Knowledge, all right? He can open up the book for us, right? Like, he's been opening up the book for us for a minute, right? So now we can look at the book and have a clear view. You have everybody else looking at it like, what is you know what I'm saying? What does this mean? I, I think it means this. I mean, my interpretation. We ain't got to do that. We can just look at it and say what it say. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty clear. It just says that's what it say. You know what I'm saying? And then we walk, we walk in it. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what it say. That's what it say. And we walk in it. Right? So that's information. That's knowledge. You know what I'm saying? We did a whole study on Revelation. We can break that thing down. I think information that knowledge. That's real good. At the end of the day, though, all that information and knowledge, what happens if you don't know that? I mean, but I know my Bible, though. Sometimes, look, I don't even have a Bible in front. Sometimes I can just call, like, like just go here, because I remember that. I remember it so good. What's that going to mean for me when most of our guys say, uh, but you kept sinning, though? Don't make a mistake, right? It's, not, it's cool. It's cool to have experiences with God, see visions, and all that stuff. It's real nice, and it's encouraging sometimes. But if you don't use that encouragement to obey, it's a waste of time. 
it's a real nice thing to be able to like to remember verses and remember Bible and, and know the Bible so well and know exactly what God is trying to say and be able to break down the parables and the prophecies. All that's real nice. But the person who don't know none of that, but they know enough to say, if they say, don't do it, I'm not going to do it, he's going to see the kingdom before your butt do it. All that information you know is for nothing. You know what the Most High God used you to do? He used you to teach somebody else and then sit your butt right to hell. This thing, we have to understand that this is serious. You don't think God would do that? Well, okay, so when Moses, I mean, let's just, I mean, just, let's just recap a little bit. We read through Deuteronomy. When Moses went to the people, and the people had, had, uh, had bowed down before the golden calf, right? And they made a feast to the golden calf, and they made an image of the Most High God, right? And they made them out to be a golden calf. Moses went to the Most High God to pray on their behalf. Who remembers what, what, what the Most High God said to Moses? I'm gonna get all it, all of them. Let me let, let me just get rid of all of them. We'll start all over with you, Moses. You don't want to obey me. I get rid of all them. We'll just start. I just do the whole thing. I mean, I made a promise to Abraham, right? I told Abraham it'd be a great nation. So that's why I chose this people. But you know what? You Abraham, you kin Abraham, right? You come from Abraham. Technically, I'm still keeping the promise. Let me get rid of all they buts. We'll start over with you. That thing makes sense. That's how God is thinking. You know what we lose? Because we don't go into the law, because we don't go into the history, because we don't go into the prophecy, we lose the meaning. We, we lose God's character. We don't know what the man is about. We just assume, you know what? God just love everybody. And that's easy for us. God just love that God. But mm -mm. You, you can go to a Christian right now and show them something in their book. They got this, they got this little thing uh, where they uh, took quotes from the Bible. And they went to Christians. And it, was, it wasn't in America, but they went to Christians and they were like, this is quotes from the Quran, right? The Muslim faith. They were like, yes, yeah, this is from the Quran. And Christian, but it was from the Bible. And Christian, see, that's a violent faith. And this had nothing. And they're sitting there bad talking and thinking this is the Muslims because they're not familiar with what the book is. They don't know God's character. They don't know that. No, that's God. That's how he operates. Right? And because you don't know that character and because you don't see lightning bolts coming down every two seconds, then you, you take that to say, you know what? God loves everything. God loves everybody. God loves this dog. God, God loves the cat. Right? Don't kill insects. Don't eat, don't eat any vegetables. All right? You know what I'm saying? What they say? No, they say you eat vegetables. Don't kill any animal. God loves the cow. God loves all these things. Mm -hmm. God loves a whole lot of stuff. It's in everything right, right to darn hell, too. Everything that don't do what he say. I bet you that cow going to do what he say. That's y'all stupid, but they ain't gonna do what he said. Right? That's our bus that we we run around ain't gonna do it. The cow gonna do what he said. The sun gonna do what he said. The moon gonna do what he said. Everything he put in the porter, that thing gonna do what he said. We don't only want to give him problem. My fault. Go ahead. No, wasn't it um, a little later when uh, y'all was talking uh, to the tree? Didn't he, didn't he uh, tell the tree? I think it was the, uh, the tree of life. The what I want. You know what I'm talking about, right? Matthew 17. That's a long shot. Let's try it. Matthew 17. You wanna get Isaiah first? Yeah, I want Isaiah chapter 29, verse 9, but let's get to Matthew chapter 17. That's a long shot. That probably ain't even it. Matthew chapter 17. Look it up on your phone real quick. It'll be a fig tree. It may not even be Matthew. Matthew 17 came to mind, though. Yeah, it'd be a fig, fig tree that gave not its fruit. Oh, yeah, you are. It's Matthew 21. 21? It's Matthew chapter 21. What verse it start with? Mark their Bible up with. No, it's Okay, uh, Matthew 21, verse 19. Okay. It's Matthew chapter 21, verse 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. Uh -huh. And said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig, the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye should not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. 
He said, he said, I command the darn mountain to move. Mm. Y'all remember when he was in the boat and he was asleep? Mm. Y'all remember the man got up and everybody freaking out. Man waited till they freaking out. You know what I'm saying? That's Yahushua talk. Yahushua down there, he sleep, he know they freaking out. I mean, that's just how I like to think that the man know they freaking out up there. You know what I'm saying? He know how he do. He dramatic. You know, y'all should like to make a show. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, he ain't come there. He ain't, he ain't trying to do nothing regular. He like to make sure it's a spectacle. So he laying down. He sleep. You know what I'm saying? Doing his thing. Everybody up there freaking out. I like that man. One eye open like that. And then they come there. He just, you know what I'm saying? Act like he back to sleep. They come down there messing with him. He waking up like, why y'all tripping? Walk right up. He said, peace be still. Whole thing just calm down. Everything, go, everything gonna do what the man say one way or the other. We can act up if we want to. Guess what? At the end of it, we're going to do what he say too, because he's going to say, lake of fire or enter into the kingdom. And guess what? Ain't nobody rebelling against those commands. That's it after that. That's why it's important for us to get it right right now. We had a chance. The most of our God is going to see fit that we had the information. That's all we need. Before we get uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 29, grab, uh, grab uh, what I want. John 6. Give me John chapter 6. Give me verse 43. This is John chapter 6, verse 43. Y'all sure therefore answered and said unto them, Remember not among yourselves. For no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets. It is written in the prophets. What are the prophets, brother? Uh, the prophet books. Yeah. Right? The book. Quoting from Isaiah. Almost every book written in here is a prophet. So it says, written in the prophets, what? They shall be all taught of God. He said, and they shall all be taught of Yah. Right? So what do we need if we want to make it into the kingdom? He said, no man comes to me except who? The Father who sent me draw him. And, and then what? I'll raise him up at the last day. So if you want to come to Yahushua, first thing that got to happen, the Father got to draw you. And then if you come to him after that, then he'll raise you up in the last day. Then he came back after that and he said, it's written in the prophets. They shall all be taught of who? God. So they shall all be taught of God. Then he says, therefore. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father. Every man, therefore, who has done two things. Heard and done what? Learned information all we need is the information he said every man who has heard and learned of the father is gonna do what come to me so you know what i gotta you know that i mean the way the way my mind where i just gotta break it down if yeah. you don't end up with the messiah that means you didn't hear something or you never understood it that's what it all comes down to right people who reject god and, and hear the word and all that they hear it but they never understood it. Because if they understood it, they, they understand, like, well, that's the only way to go. Right? Sometimes we're going to hear it and we're not going to understand it. Sometimes we're going to hear it again and not understand it. It got to be on us to put everything we got into understanding it. That way the Most High God see us, see us scratching at that door, and he say, all right, get your butt in here. Right? This is Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter uh, 29, verse 9. Tasha! Can you bring me uh, a couple of waters? Stay yourselves and wonder. Here, here's a book. Book says, stay yourself. Sit yourself still and think about this. That's what it's saying. Stay yourselves and wonder. Sit your butt still and think about this. Cry ye out and cry. Uh-huh. They are drunken, but not with wine. Uh-huh. They stagger, but not with strong drink. Uh-huh. For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and has covered your eyes. Mm -hmm. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, has he covered. Mm -hmm. And the vision of all has become unto you as words of a book that is sealed, mm -hmm. which men deliver to one and that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. All right? He said, The vision of all. What is the vision of all talking about? Prophecy or scripture. It's right. talking about the scripture. All right? Remember, all these things are prophets. All these people who, who wrote this are prophets. Prophets have visions. So he's saying, The visions of all the book are sealed. It's like you taking a book to somebody and it's locked up. You ever get like one of those journals? You know what I'm saying? Like in high school, you see, you know, somebody had that journal and had that lock on it. You know what I'm saying? It's like you ain't got the little key to the lock. You have one of them things, didn't you? You have one of them things? Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You, know what I'm saying? you get that thing, you get the key to the lock, you can't get that thing off. You know what I'm saying? He's saying that's what it's like. He said, the Bible is like this. 
It's getting to the point right now, the Bible is like, he said, everybody's staggering around, but not because of strong drink, right? They're not drunk. He said, I close their eyes. In other words, people act, they act, you know, a drunk person, they don't know where they're going, bumping into stuff. He said, spiritually, that's where y'all at. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. Y'all bumping into stuff. Y'all got 33,000 different denominations all reading the same darn book. Everybody agree with the Old Testament, but y'all come up with some New Testament. You got New Testament. You got Old Testament. Everybody agree with that Old Testament. Then from that, you get Muslims who have the Quran, right? And then you get then you get Jewish people who say, you know what? The New Testament ain't real. We can all agree with this first part of the book. Nobody, every, everything else after that is just a mess. He said, y'all don't know what y'all, everybody just darn drunk. But not with strong drink. Right? Not with strong drink, they just darn drunk. I appreciate you, baby. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so you, you look at it, and the most high God is just trying to let us know this is this is the this is the state that we in. You good? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, look at you stunting them, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but he's looking at it, he's trying to explain this is the state that we're in. So he's like, in this state, this book is like I just gave a book to somebody and I'm like, read it. But they gotta knock this little lock on it. How I'm gonna open it up? Right? I'm trying, I'm really trying to look at it and it's sealed. He's saying he's saying, it's sealed. I can't do nothing with it. What else is it like? And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not learned. Right? And then I'm taking the book to my son, who haven't learned how to read yet. I'm looking like, hey, hey, Zahar, go ahead and read that to me. Zahar, come here. Hurry up. Because we need to be able to understand. These are, these are, the, these are the metaphors and these are the, the, the parables that he's using to help us I'm get it. Come here. Let me help you out. Come here. Read this to me. I, Read it. No. Why not? Because I don't know how. That's the book. He as good as a Christian. Right now, he a Christian. He a Christian. He a Muslim right now. Die for darn big. Go sit down and go play. I appreciate it. <laughs> right? But that's as good as a darn Christian or a Muslim at that point. Because they don't know. But guess what? If everybody was looking to Zahar to give him, give them the answers, and there was nobody else around, even though he can't read it, guess what Zahar got to do? You got to fill some gaps. And what you going to do when you fill gaps? You're going to take from what you think it is, take from what you know, take from your history, your past, the way your mama raised you, all these different things, and you're going to start plugging that into all the gaps that you have about the Bible. And that's how you get traditions. That's how you get people that look at That's how you get these, these weird churches that come in and say, these women can't wear pants. Or mimes. <laughs> that's how you get the darn mimes talking about this is praise dancing. Yes. You got a darn white mask on, jumping around in a darn dress, and you a darn man. That thing's creepy. The mimes, they creep me out. Bro. What in the world is wrong with you? Right? But we look at this stuff, it just comes from tradition. That's how you, even the Muslim. That's how you get them talking about our women gotta wear that. What's it called? The uh, what's that thing called? You Muslim, ain't you? No. <laughs> what's that thing called? A uh, hijab. You know what I'm saying? The women gotta read. You know what I'm I read they book. I read they book. They don't say nothing about the women having to wear a darn a full face cover. I think you tell them to cover up their bosom. You know what I'm saying? That thing covers the bosom, the face, and all that. So all you can see is they darn eye. All of them look like darn scorpions. You know what I'm talking about? I'm like, what in the world, what in the world wrong with these women? But they, they raise in these countries with the tradition, what they know. They sitting there trying to honor their husband, honor their father. In their mind, it's a great thing. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't no sin to wear it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no sin to wear it. It's, it's modesty. It's just what's the sin. The sin ends up being where the men put it on these women, or even other women put it on these women, and make them feel like they're sinning if they don't do it. When we going to teach our people the truth? Right? Ain't no sin. Ain't no sin in, in, in going and worshiping God on no Sunday. No sin in that. The sin is making somebody feel like that's the day that God chose. And the Sabbath is done away with. The sin is telling you people lies. Teaching from ignorance when you haven't taken the, the time to learn it. Right? Where'd we leave off last week?
Defend Joshua 7. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Joshua 7 now. So this is Joshua, Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Okay. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and donkey with the edge of the sword. All right, T, what are we talking about right now? The children of Israel crossed over Jordan. They got to Jericho, marched around the walls, marched around the walls, just like the Most High commanded the priest to tell the people to do. Mm -hmm. Wall fell down flat. We go in to take Jericho, just like the Most High God commanded, because this is the land that we were supposed to take. Okay. Let's keep going. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out there the woman and all that she has, as you swore unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brothers and all that she had. And they brought out all their kindred and left them outside the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and gold and the vessels of brass and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot alive in her father's household, and all that she had. And she lived in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Okay. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and builds this city Jericho. He gonna do it how? He shall lay the foundation thereof in his, in his firstborn, mm -hmm. and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. Right? So he cursed it. He said, we tore this thing down by the hand of the Most High God. Anybody who builds that thing up, they're going to be building that thing on top of their firstborn. Right? Keep going. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. Right? So after that, people got to talking. You remember what happened What happened when the two spies ran up on Rahab? She was talking about how everybody in the nation was scared of the Hebrews. She was like, they heard about what happened in Egypt. We heard that the Most High God split a whole red sea for y'all. She was like, listen, uh, all right, listen, we, uh, we trembling over here because of y'all. We know that the Most High God is about to come tear. Just save me. I hide y'all. Just save me. Right? Save me and my family. Then after that, you know what I'm saying, we uh, crossed the Jordan River. And then the Most High God made the water stop at the Jordan River and we crossed. Right? So then we crossed the Jordan River, water stopped. The Canaanites start hearing about that one. They start getting shook, shooken up about that. So now it's coming again. We come and we, all the walls of Jericho, these are strong walls, right? They still talk about, you know what I'm saying? They don't really like to talk about it too much nowadays, but the walls of Jericho is documented as being strong walls. Ask them, can they find them now? You, I mean, you can find writing from their people talking about these are strong walls. They can go up and dig up around where they got it. Ask them, can they find a wall? All the rest of these places, they can find walls, these ancient walls that's been there. Ask them, can they find a wall in Jericho or where Jericho was, right? They don't like, they don't like talking about stuff that proved God, you know what I'm saying, to prove to God, right? But you know what I'm saying? See, all them walls came straight down, right? What you going to do? Go back up in there and take it, right? Take the whole land, right? It's us now. That's real. All right, keep going. But the children of Israel com committed a trespass in the accursed thing for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And Joshua sent, Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Aven. This is chapter 8, right? It's 7. Right? It's still 7? Yeah. Oh, no, we are on chapter 6, and now we're in 7. No, no, seven. Okay. On the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. Mm -hmm. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. Uh -huh. And make not all the people to labor there, for they are but few. Uh -huh. 
So they went up there of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. Mm -hmm. And the men of Ai smote of them about 30 and 6 men. But they chased them from before the gate, even unto Sherberim, mm -hmm. and smote them in the going down. Wherefore, the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua ripped his clothes. Watch Joshua, look. fell to the earth, earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord uh -huh. until the eventide. Uh -huh. He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. Uh -huh. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you at all brought us, brought this people over Jordan uh -huh. to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Uh -huh. Would to God we had been contented and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. All right? Look, Joshua complaining at this point. So you gotta think about what just happened. We just had this amazing victory. All the walls came right on down, right? So we looking at it like, oh, we got this, right? You kind of, you get thinking like, God on our side, you people ain't got no guy, you get all cocky. You're like, man, what's happening? So we sent some spies out to see AI. Okay, check out AI. Surprise go on down there. First time we went, you know what I'm saying, we kind of shook. We was like, man, I don't know what's gonna happen, this, that, and other. This time we go out there, check it out. Don't even send everybody. I mean, you say send 3,000 or 300. He said, don't even send everybody, just send about 3,000 down there. You don't want to make everybody labor. You know what I'm saying? Just send 3,000. We, we got this, right? So we, you know what I'm saying? We feeling ourselves at this point, right? God on our side, we can take it, right? So we go down there, send 3,000. They chase our bus right on out, right? They whoop our bus chasers right on out of there. So now how Joshua feels? Remember, chapter one, we read, Most High God said very clearly, I will not leave you or what? Forsake you. Mm. So Joshua like, oh, we got this. Where we come across, we could. So now we have our first loss. Then Joshua start complaining. Why would you do this? We could have just stayed on the other side of Jordan, God. We got some land over there already. Why would you do this? Right? Keep going. Oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns their backs before their enemies? Right? He's like, how am I explaining this? How am I explaining this? We turned our back. We ran away from the enemies. Right, I'm facing them straight up like this. Them swords start coming. I'm like, ooh, turn my back to them. Right? He said, how am I explain this to the people? Right? Everybody's going to be scared now. Keep going. For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round uh -huh. and cut off our name from the earth. Mm -hmm. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. Why liest thou thus upon thy face? Y'all have to understand the character of God, right? This is what we missed in church and all this stuff. We missed it. Nobody taught us the character of God. All the crying out that we do, all the praying that we do, all the stuff that we don't understand. It's good to be honest with God and just let him know, look, I'm not feeling how this is working out right now. But you have to understand that this is how God responds. You notice he did all that. And, and, and Joshua laid out a nice case. He wasn't just rambling. He was like, listen, this doesn't make sense. You said you were going to be with us. We walk out there and we lose. We turned our backs to the enemies. Now everybody else is going to hear about that. Right now they all scared of us because we've been having victories. They're going to hear that somebody beat us. After that, these people are completely surrounding us. They're just going to enclose us and cut, our, cut us up. And then now your name is going to be ruined. Nobody is going, you know what I mean? Because it's like you couldn't even protect your own people. So Joshua bringing up these points. Guess what God, most high God response is? Well, why don't you get up? Why are you lying on the ground? He's laying on the ground praying. Boy, get your butt up. What you, what you on the ground for? Get off your face. Watch this. Let's see if he answered one point that he made. Let's see if he get one answer from it. The Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Why liest thou thus upon thy face? Yeah, you look ridiculous. Israel, Stand your butt up, stop all that crying. What you doing? Let's see. Israel has sinned. Uh-huh. They have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. Do you think I'm playing? Is what he's trying to say. I specifically told y'all, don't take of the accursed thing. Do you think y'all can just take it? And then after that, y'all still gonna have any victories? I don't care what I promise. If you disobey, I'm going to get you. That's what he's trying to communicate. Get your butt up. I ain't listening to nothing you talking about. I'm slapping that junk down. That's how God is thinking. Why am I sitting here talking to you, listening to your prayer of all this extra stuff when you ain't talking about nothing that the problem is? Problem is sin. You praying about all this stuff. Oh, I don't want this to happen. And I wish I had this. And what if you just did that? Okay, that's great. The problem is sin. 
Let's talk about that. Get your darn butt up and just obey. That's why it's a pet peeve for me, people, you know what I'm saying? You got to, when, when I, was, I was going through a lot of stuff getting still in, you know, getting into this house, right? And one of the things people kept on, just, I mean, just, they, they know I'm in the Bible and all, so, well, you know, just pray about it. And I, you know, so I don't, I don't clap, but sometimes I'm like, that, that, you know, just, <laughs> God, just pray about it. Just tell me to save more money and do right. something. Black. Just right. pray about right. it. Right. Just pray. Don't talk to me about no just darn pray about it. That's not how it works. Just obey the man. Who can we think of that obeyed the man more than anybody? I'm just trying to think. I mean, like who I did, I don't know, maybe everything that the most high God said. Anybody think of anybody? No, nobody. Daniel. The Messiah. Grab for me a... Uh, what I want? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Deuteronomy chapter 26. Not Deuteronomy, I'm sorry. Uh, Matthew chapter 26. I think that's what I want. chapter 17. You sure it's 17? I feel like John 17 is a different prayer. Uh, I think it's John. Uh, the, five, the hours come. Yeah, not that prayer. Oh, not that one. Not the one for the disciples. Yeah, no, not that one. Okay. Which one are you talking about? You're talking about when he's in the garden. Right before they grab them. Gotta be six. I mean, 26. Let me see. Oh, okay. Uh, what if we get our sword in this place? No. Uh, Maybe 27? So we look at it okay. and right. what verse? This cup passed for me? Yeah. Okay. What verse? We're going to go to 40. John 26, 40. This is, this is uh, Matthew chapter 26, no, Matthew. verse uh, 40. Matthew chapter 26, verse 40. Watch it. I mean, it's the man who, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess did everything that the Most High God said. Right? Did everything he, he said. Most High God said, Things will go your way if you do everything you said, right? Let's see. And he comes unto the disciples and finds them asleep and said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O Lord, O my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Uh-huh. And he came, and he came and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. Mm -hmm. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Mm -hmm. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Mm -hmm. Rise and let us be going. Behold, he is at hand who does betray me. So notice what his prayer was. If this cup can pass from me, that'd be great. But at the end of the day, whose will going to be done? So when you get done praying, right? There ain't nothing wrong with prayer. I'm not saying just, when they say just pray, my issue is the just. That's all I do? Just, that's it? Stop doing everything else, just pray. That's it? No. Right? Because even if I obeyed a man and did everything he told me to do, at the end of the day, his will would be done. That don't mean I'm going to get my out. Right? 
That don't mean I'm going to get the job that I want to get. That don't mean that all the trouble that's coming my way is going to stop. We just re witnessed Joshua praying. He didn't know nothing about nobody sinning. He thought everything was good. Most of God didn't tell him, okay, okay, don't worry, I'll do. No. You know what he said? Get your darn butt up. What you laying down for? Let's go back to Joshua. That's the character of God. Same thing with Jeremiah. Jeremiah asked him, why do you let these sinners off the hook, God? You know what I'm saying? Why you, why you got your people out here struggling? We your people. You chose us. Why we out here struggling? You know what he told Jeremiah? You crying because cause you running with the footmen? Don't you know you're going to have to run with the horses soon? He don't answer none of his points. At the end of the day, he just say, boy, you better shape up. It's nothing. It's only the beginning. Same thing with grab Habakkuk. Mm -hmm. Grab Habakkuk. What is it? Habakkuk 1? Yeah. It's Habakkuk chapter uh, 1. What, on verse 1? Did it start off like that? I don't know. Yeah, it does start off like that. Double check it for me to make sure. All right? This book is full. We never been taught the character of God. These things don't get highlighted. Yeah. You can go to church. I mean, you can go to church. You can go to church all your life, and they'll never even think to highlight this. Not, and not necessarily all they fault. Because they learn from a pastor, and they learn from a pastor, and they learn from the pastor. And if you follow it far enough back, you got a Hebrew slave being taught by a Christian uh, slave master. Right? And where do you think, where do you think the Christian slave master just looked at the book and said, oh, let's mess it up for the slave? Uh, to some degree. But even the Christian didn't know nothing about it. And you know who that Christian learned it from? They learned it from their pastor, and they learned it from their pastor, and they learned it from their pastor. And you trace it all the way back, they learned it from the Catholic. Or they, they split off from the Catholic and say, hey, Catholic, you don't believe it right. But nobody taught them nothing. They're just trying to figure it out themselves. So you take it from the Catholic. Who the Catholic learn it from? Well, they learned it from their priests. And they learned it from their priests. And they learned it from their priests. And you take it far enough back, then you got a Christian that learned from another Christian. And who did those Christians originally learn from? A Hebrew. If you take it all the way back, they learned it from a Hebrew. And then the Hebrews were moved out of the picture. So it left Christian, Gentiles, teaching other Gentiles. And all this stuff just gets keep passed down, passed down, passed down until we get to today. So everybody made a minute. And that's why we read, and that's why we started off with Isaiah. And it told us, they, they drunk, but not with strong drink. They staggering. The book is sealed. It's as if somebody can't read. Right? That's how we look at it. That's what we're dealing with. It's because it's all been word of mouth. The book is right here. No excuse. Right? That's why it's no real excuse because the book is right here. It's written down and it ain't changed. Right? But when you got people who are not going to take the time to read the whole book and you got somebody else who they put their trust in and say, you know what? I've read it and I'll tell you what it means. And they really haven't read it and they really don't know what it means. Well, then that's where you get your problems. Right? This Habakkuk what? One? one, one. So this, is, this is the book of Habakkuk. This is verse 1, chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 1. The burden which Habakkuk saw, the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Uh-huh. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Mm -hmm. Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why do you show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? Mm -hmm. For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are they, and there are that rise up in strife and contention. Mm -hmm. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment does never go forth. Right? He tells he like... All this stuff I see, why you show it to me? You know this stuff is going to vex me. You know it's going to hurt my feelings. You know I don't like to look at this stuff. I look at all these sinners. He said, and the law, ain't nobody getting judged by the law. In other words, he's saying, the law say you do this, you should die. I don't see these people dying. He's telling God, he's like, listen, the law, ju no judgment is going out to these people. Right? These are legitimate concerns that he's raising to God. This is how we should raise them, by the way. Nothing that we read, even though we look at it and God ain't responding to them the way we expect, nothing that we reading is wrong. They getting a response. Right? And they in, in a weird way, they getting the answer too. He's just not answering them directly. Because he's always thinking above us. Right? It wouldn't even make sense for us to be sitting here, okay, but God, what why why is it like this? And he's sitting there, oh, it's like this because he don't have time for it. It's a waste of time. You're not even ask, answer, asking the right question. You know what I'm talking about? Let me just, you know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and get you up here real quick. You just shape up. You just do what I tell you. 
All right, keep going. For the wicked does surround about the righteous. Uh huh. Therefore, a wrong judgment proceeds. Uh huh. Behold, among the okay, wait. Therefore, a wrong judgment proceeds. Uh huh. Behold, you among the heathen in regard and mm -hmm. wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which you will not believe. This is God talking now. Though it be taught, though it be told you. Mm hmm. For look, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the now, understand, that are understand, not theirs. Listen, understand what the question was. Question was, why do you let these sinners prosper? Right? It, essentially, that's what he's saying. Why you? It's a whole bunch of sinners. Ain't nobody getting in trouble for it. What's going on, God? There's no judgment going on. Right? No righteous judgment. God said, "Behold, I'm gonna do something in your day that you ain't gonna believe, even if somebody told it to you. You know how I'm gonna start that thing off? I'm gonna raise up the Chaldeans, sinners, right? People who don't respect God, and what they gonna do? Uh, to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. I'm gonna I'm put. I'm gonna make sure that the Chaldeans rise up, and they are gonna take over all these nations. His question is, why do you let these sinners prosper? And he said, oh, oh, it's, oh, it's just getting started now, boy. What are you talking about? The Chaldeans, they about to take over all this stuff. Right? You have to understand this is how God is like, working. He literally told them your country is about to be destroyed. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you think it's bad now? <laughs> oh, let me show you what's about to happen. Keep going. Watch this. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Mm -hmm. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are far more fiercer than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from afar. Mm -hmm. They shall fly as the eagle that hasten to eat. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. Right? Look, he said they shall, they go, they shall come all in what? All for what? The, uh, they shall come all for violence. All for violence, right? Go back to like verse 1 or verse 2. O Lord, how long shall I cry and thou will not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence and thou will not say. The man started off like, listen, I'm crying out to you because I'm seeing violence. You know what his answer was? Oh, I'm going to bring some more people. And they're going to be all about violence. <laughs> That's all they're thinking about is violence. Keep going. And they shall gather their captivity as the sand, and they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. Uh -huh. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power upon, unto his God. Mm -hmm. So look, he telling them, after they get done doing all this stuff, they gonna be looking like, ah, praise the gods, the sun god, or whatever god the Chaldeans worship. They going to give all the credit to their God. God is telling them this is what's going to happen. Right? Remember, he's looking at it. He's saying, these people are sinners. They have all these false gods, and you still letting these people roll. He's like, yeah. And it's about to get worse. And after they get done, they going to praise their God. They ain't going to praise me. They going to praise their own God. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Are thou not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, my Holy One? Mm -hmm. We shall not die, O Lord. Thou hast ordained them for judgment. Mm -hmm. And, O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Mm -hmm. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil mm -hmm. and cannot look on iniquity. Mm -hmm. That's why you look upon them that deal treacherously and hold thy tongue when the wicked devours the man that is more righteous than he and make men as the fishes of the sea as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. Mm -hmm. They take up all of them with the angle. They catch them in their net and gather them in their drag. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they rejoice and are glad. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they sacrifice unto their net and burn incense unto their drag, because by them their portion is fat and their meat plenteous. Mm -hmm. Shall they therefore empty their net and not spare continually display the nations? I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. Right. And I shall answer when I am repro reproved. He said, I'm going to stand. So he came back and he asked some more questions. But God, now you pure now. I know you can't sit here and watch all this iniquity. That's just not what type of God you are. Right? I know you can't do it. So I'm going to ask this last question. And I'm going to stand back and I'm going to see what you're going to say to me. Right? I'm going to see how I'm reproved. Watch this. 
And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that he that reads it. Okay. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Mm -hmm. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Right? He said, Write this vision. It's not gonna happen tomorrow. It's gonna be it's it's gonna be for an appointed time. And even though it takes a long time, he said, wait for that thing. It's gonna happen. Right? Watch this. Behold, his his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. Yea, also, because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man, neither keeps at home, who enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathers unto him all nations, and heaps up and heaps unto him all people. Mm -hmm. Shall not these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him that increases that which is not his. How long? And to him that le that ladeth himself with thick clay. Mm -hmm. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee, and awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booty unto them? Mm -hmm. Because you have because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee, because of men's blood and for the violence of the land of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that covers an evil consciousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. So after all that, basically what the Most High God is saying is, after everything happens, after I raise the Chaldeans and do all the things that you just prayed, like why is this happening? After I make it happen a little bit more, at the very end of it, you wait. Just hold tight, wait for it. Everybody is gonna get it. Nobody escapes. It's basically what he's trying to tell them. Nobody escapes. We not escaping, they not escaping, nobody gets by. Everybody is going to be judged. He just says, Terry, it's for an appointed time. You just hold on to it. It may not happen tomorrow, but it's going to happen. Right? Let's go back to Joshua. Let's see if we can finish that out. It, Joshua, uh, what verse we leave off on? Uh, 47. Joshua 47. No, Joshua 7 11. Joshua 7 11. It's Joshua chapter 7, verse 11. Right, so we see Joshua sitting down there. He's laying down there praying. The Most High God just tell him, "Get your darn butt up, boy! What you laying down for?" Right, because God's character is that of, "Let's get to it." Right, we don't have time to be doing all this extra stuff. Let's get to it. I told you to do something specific. You praying to me about what you should have been praying for me? What did we do wrong? That should have been the question. What did we do wrong? We must have did something wrong. Right. What verse? Uh, 7 11. This is uh, Joshua chapter 7, verse 11. What does the book say? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. Mm -hmm. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and disassembled also. Mm -hmm. And they have put it even amongst their own stuff. Mm -hmm. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Mm -hmm. Neither will I be with you any more except you destroy the accursed from among you. Mm -hmm. Up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. Mm -hmm. For thus says the Lord of God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, mm -hmm. O Israel. Thou cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taken shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the households which the Lord shall take shall come by shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has wrought folly in Israel. All right. So basically what he's saying is we have we have somebody that's in Israel that committed this sin. What they did is he told them when we go up into Jericho and we take this land, when you take it, don't take any of the things. The gold, the silver, that goes to the treasury. That goes to the temple. Right? But don't take any of that stuff for yourself. So he's saying somebody broke that rule. Nobody knows who that is at this point. So he told Joshua to figure it out. I want you to take tribe by tribe. Right? And these, we used to have something called the Urm and the Therm. therm. Right? And so, and, and we used to also cast lots. So I'm not exactly sure on which one we did on this one. But what happens is we'll take one of those methods 
and we'll line everybody up, each tribe. So we had 12 different tribes, all the tribes will come, and then we'll do something where the Most High God is letting us know, okay, it's this tribe. So we'll start, you know what I'm saying? We'll be like, okay, tribe of Reuben. Okay, no, it ain't tribe of Reuben. All right, uh, tribe of Simeon. Okay, ain't the tribe of Reuben, Simeon. Uh, tribe of Judah, just like that. And so we just go down the line, and then once we get the tribe, then we say, okay, we got all Judah here. We believe it's Judah. All right, uh, let's take household by household. All right, the Harris household. All right, ain't the Harris household. The Lee household. All right, ain't the Lee household. The Smith household. Okay, ain't the Smith household. All right, the, I don't know, whatever household. All right, it's this household. So then we take that household. Then we break it, that household down by family. I mean, by uh, people, and, uh, man by man. So we say, all right, Joe. All right, ain't Joe. Jim. No, it ain't Jim. I don't know why I'm using all these Gentile names. All right? You know what I'm saying? So you do that. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then you get to the person that you need to get to. Then once you get to that person, it's like, okay, this is our God. So that was the whole process that we're about to go through right now. Let's see. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel out by their tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken. Mm -hmm. And he brought the family of Judah and he took the family of the Zoharites. Zorhites. Mm -hmm. And he brought the family of the Zorhites by man by man. And Zabdi was taken. Mm -hmm. And he brought his household man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. All right, so it narrowed that thing right on down. Right? The way it's written, it just seemed like a quick process. But you have to understand, this is over a million people that he's dealing with. So he had to split all these people up in the clan, I mean, the uh, tribes. Then he had to, you know what I'm saying, just go through the long process of going through each one of these families until he gets to the person he wants. So it was a, it was a long time, no doubt, that it took for him to do that. Till he finally gets to this person. And he ain't mad. He said, listen, just give God the glory and confess. Just tell us all this. Just give God the glory and tell us what you did. Let's hear about it. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, mm -hmm. and thus and thus have I done. Mm -hmm. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent mm -hmm. and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent. And behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. Look, they were all the stuff he stole right before the Most High God. And what else happened? And Joshua and all Israel took with him, took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold, and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his donkeys and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? Mm -hmm. The Lord shall trouble thee this day. Mm -hmm. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Mm -hmm. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. And now he ends up being an example. Yeah, him and his family. All right? That quick, the Most High God made them an example. So now what does that do for the people? You got to understand God's character. They weren't thinking about God's character at that point. God has proven that his character at this point is put fear in people. Right? He spoke to us from the top of a mountain. What was he doing there? He was yelling the commandments. He was yelling them things from the top of a mountain. Thunder, lightning, everything going down. The, the mountain was erupting with fire. Everything coming out. We got scared. Okay, we didn't take it there. We didn't, you know what I'm saying? We didn't listen to him at that point. So then what happened after that? He scared the Egyptians. He started killing their babies. Well, I guess that was before that. He started killing their babies. Okay, we didn't we didn't pay attention at that point either. Then we go through the wilderness. All right? He killed off an entire everybody who was over twenty. An entire generation. Killed them. More than one generation, technically. You know what I'm saying? He killed off everybody over one uh, uh, uh more than twenty. Right? That was supposed to put fear in us. Okay, we still didn't get it. Then we start fighting against all these different people, right? And then we got the people, got through them, we make it into the land, and what are the people saying? They're scared because we heard about what you did, in, uh, what, what y'all did in Egypt. 
We heard about what, what happened at the Jordan. He put fear in them, and that's how we win these wars or these battles. So we haven't got that point yet. So guess what he's going to do with us? He's going to put fear in us. Right? All right, you still sinning? I'll kill him off and, and, and the family. Hopefully y'all relax. Right? And he's done that before. He did it in the wilderness with uh, Korah. Right? So that's how the Most High God works. He will use examples to put fear in us. Then he have mercy on who we have mercy on. Right? It's both sides. There's a lot of things that we read in here tonight. Everybody got struck down at that very moment. Same thing today. Everybody gets struck down at this very moment. A lot of people erect certain things and nothing happened. But you got it's a statue of Jesus that got erected up and the lightning bolt hit it and that thing burnt down, burnt down the whole church almost. Right? So sometimes, huh? I forget. It was uh, somewhere in the middle of the country if I don't, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken. Right? But you look at some of these things, a lot of stuff that go on seems like nothing happened. Sometimes something happened, that thing happened right away. Right? Most of our God is in control. He had mercy. He, he the one that's figuring that stuff out. You guess what we are. Well, well guess what we got to do. Just obey. That's it. That was the end of the chapter? All right. We're going to wrap this one up. Any questions or anything? All right. Let's go ahead and pray out.